Hi guys. Hi. How you doing? Fine. You? Good. Yeah, it's good. Um, before we go into the documentary, um, how do you look back on that first period of Blind Melon? Oh, it was a really good time. It really was. The beginning was great. I mean, the very beginning. You mean like, as in the beginning of the career? I mean, the first, the first few years. That also, um, uh, what did the, what the documentary is also about? What, what was it for you? The time frame of well, forming the band yeah. until the uh, the death of Shannon. What what was it, what was it for you? It was a surreal experience because, you know, you have this group of people and you're all working towards something and you get all, all this horrible stuff happens and it takes a long time, you feel like, and then all of a sudden it works. Yeah. And so everyone is like, what? I mean, you, you uh, and you think it will never end maybe, or maybe you're paranoid that it will end, but it's, it's um, it, uh, it was that, it was a, it was an unusual time, uh, I think, for all of us because, you know, we had all been playing since we were, what, 13, 14 years old. So we were, you know, five years later to have that happen, you know, I mean, all your dreams came true overnight, yeah. you know. And then ended. And then ended. What was, um, what was for you a personal high point during those years? For oh, you, man, you? boy, there's so many. Honestly, there's so, there's so many incredible, incredible moments. Some of my highlights, some of my highlights are even disastrous shows like Halloween. I can't help but that's still yeah. That was a yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, but there, there were a lot of shows that were. Uh, I mean, stuff happened at our shows because um, you know we had people in the band who were willing to step outside the bounds of normal behavior. That's true. And so, uh, yeah, some, of <laughs> some of those I remember. But the obvious things like he's saying, like your boyhood dreams when you're on the cover of Rolling Stone, like things like that. It's like you know. When you're young and you like hope to make records for a living, like that's not even a dream you think about. That's like beyond a dream. You know what I mean? So you don't go like, I'm gonna be on the cover of the sun. You're like, I just want to make a record. So everything was beyond my dreams at that point. So it was incredible opening up for the Stones, opening up for Neil Young, like all those, all those moments too, where you're hanging out with your heroes was just you know beyond my dreams. Shannon started uh, filming. What 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 was your opinion back then when he when he started when he when he filmed? I have to say I was annoyed at times. You it was know, annoying. It was annoying. You know, there was moments that you just wanted it to be you know, you and whoever was there. And sometimes you just felt in, I felt invaded at times. Now I feel terrible saying that, and I couldn't be more grateful that he has this incredible gift to give us. You know, all this amazing footage. But at the time I was just like, oh man, come on, really with the camera again? You know, it was it was never ending. I lived with him in Hol in uh, Hollywood for like right before the band really started making our record, and so for about a year, you know, when I mean, he had the cameras since the very beginning, like the day we met him. But it was like um, just living with him. You never know where that camera is, and and it's one of the things that over the years you have to become aware of where it is totally. because and it could be hidden. Could be hidden in the room. He and, even and, hid the red light so you wouldn't know when it was on. Yeah. You know what I mean? You always had a piece of tape over the red light, so you never knew. So I remember, yes. Yeah, you're holding it like this, and you're like, are you filming me or not? I, so, you know, there's that frustration at times, you know? I was in a, like, a, I, and I, I told these guys before, I was in a bathroom stall one time, you know, just minding my own business. You know, like a 15, 20 minute little break. <laughs> and, um, you know, at some point, I, I, I hear a shuffling, I look up. And he's <laughs> over the stall with the camera. I'm like, yeah. we don't need this. Yeah, For whatever right. it is you're doing, there this is not. Moments like that. It's not footage here that you really are going to be <laughs> needing. <laughs> so I mean, you just never knew when you were going to get. But did it mean that you actually will? Um, were you? Could you be yourself? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it was around so often that you know it was always around. So you just you know, you got used to it. You know. You definitely got used to it, you know. So yeah, I think we were ourselves. Absolutely, he captured us. Like, like the, the way you were. Yeah. Um, None of us are going to win an Academy Award for acting performance in the movie. Yeah, though. no, 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 <laughs> no. But I, but I can imagine, especially since it's because it, it was five or six years. I mean, in the beginning, you think, well, where is it? And you're yeah, you're like maybe this. in the beginning, you're right. You feel self-conscious. Like, yeah, I, self like, I don't like to be filmed. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was always just like, oh, trying to hide from it many times, you know? Well, no one knew that stuff could end up on the internet back then. That's true. You know what I mean? So like, you just think, oh, this is going to somewhere get buried in yeah. Shannon's personal collection, yeah. and I don't want him to have it. Yes, you know? exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but then later, you, you know, as, as, as the times changed, I mean, he, you know, and that points to the fact that he was really ahead of his time in mm -hmm. that way. I mean, he, 
he was shooting a reality TV show movie <laughs> before yeah. the genre existed. And before we go to the to the, the story of the of the, yeah. of the of the of the documentary, when when did you actually start paying attention to what he has filmed and, and, and thought, well, maybe we can do something with this? Oh, not until he passed away. No, I mean, no, but was it immediately or maybe oh, the last no, no, four no, no, no. years later? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In 2007, um, Colleen came on the road and started thinking about, you know, filming the band and doing some stuff. And through that process, this is a really different movie, but through that process, we said, oh, we should get all those tapes that Shannon shot. So we sent them to Danny. And then that's when this sort of new movie sort of Happen, but I mean, 2007 is when we got. The I movie. mean, there's actually a whole other movie about yeah. the new band. Yeah, you know. yeah. So that was we went on in, in a different, in a different way, and uh, we're happy we did because you know the fact that it is the it's only his footage, is um, you know is makes it a really special film. I, I I think you know. But back then, 2007, was it then with you maybe the project being like it ended up now, or was it something more for you personally or? It was going to be just a different movie, you know what I mean? It, it was, was going to incorporate the new yeah. elements of the band also and sort of integrate that and show the like the a trajectory. Of exactly. But then we realized the purity of just Shannon's yeah. film to do that, which makes it a lot harder. It would have been a lot easier to include like us talking now about the days or whatever, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so the sequel will be out in 2027. <laughs> but. <laughs> What were for you when you watched this documentary or watched the footage? Um, um, was it hard? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was hard the first few times. That it, that, and it's even hard at moments now. It just depends how I'm feeling in the moment. But yeah, it's super hard. It's hard to watch it with people. Yeah. You know, we went to the premiere of the movie at the Tribeca Festival in New York, and, and um, that was really weird. I mean, I was going to, we were set to go to two screenings. I didn't go to the second one. I was like, I, I, I've seen it enough. With, to sit in a theater full of people watching it, because it's, it's not, it's not the feel good hit of the summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a very, um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a gut punch in, in terms of just what the emotional impact of the movie is. And, and um, so that's weird. You know, you, you can watch it by yourself, and it's one perspective, and right. you're just feeling your own thing. But all of a sudden, to have all of those other perspectives, you, you, you feel it differently. You feel placed in, in the community in yeah. a different way, and it, 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 it's very strange. It's Plus, you know, it's sad. you and stuff about you on the screen, which, and then all of a sudden, you feel like, holy shit, I'm completely exposed. You yes. know, like yeah. as a fraud. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what 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 was for you personally then? If you if you look back on, on, on how you were back then, what was it? What 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 sort of feeling do you get? How you how do you c come? Not across? a fully formed person. Yeah. Like I look at myself and I think, ah, oh, yeah, I was kind of a kid, you know, in a way. I mean, yeah. just still adolescent in a way, you know, um, and and um, you know, not not the person that I am now almost. Yeah. I mean, not like I'm not fundamentally different, but it's a progression. Everybody has a progression, and yeah. I think yeah. if you saw yourself at that age, a yeah. film of you like that is sort of this intimate, you would think mm -hmm. like, wow, you know, I, I hadn't figured those things out yet. Yeah. Or, and what was it for you? Were you? Um, You're completely different. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, just, no, 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 no. It's you know what? What I you know I see a bunch of like I mean just to you know go off, go off of what he's saying like I see a bunch of guys that it's a bummer that we didn't know how to communicate as well back then. Like that's just something that happens as you get older. You start to go like, hey man, I'm so sorry, or like you just start to like be more human. Especially guys, I think take way longer than even girls. So I see a bunch of boys. You know, and I just, the only thing I, you know, I looked at them, I'm like, oh man, it would have been easier if, like, I had the tools now, you know, like, or that, that we, I wish we had them back then, you know, it would have been different, you know. I it's, wanted to discipline myself, you know. <laughs> no, but is, there, is, there, is, there, is there one example that you say, well, that happened if you look at this, this film, and it happened back then, and if, with, with the knowledge I have now, with, with the way I'm behaving and yeah. co communicating, is there, is there one example, one thing the that happened? The night Shannon died. Sorry? The night Shannon died. Okay. If you're asking for an example, the yeah. night Shannon died, I wish I would have gone and said, hey man, I'm fucking worried about you. You're freaking me out. You gotta chill out. Are you okay? Like, what's up? We didn't say that as guys, 20 something year old guys. Well, you ca we kinda did a little a bit. A little bit, but not enough. I didn't stop them that night. So if you're asking me, you know, as an older man, what I would have done differently, that night I would have said, but I went to bed. I was like, oh, he's on another one of those. We things. didn't know that it was yeah. DEFCON 1 at the time. Yeah, we did. You know what I mean? So, it's like yeah. you didn't know, like, like, 
we, we you know, for us, it was like, it was just a continuum because, you know, there had been ups and downs and Shannon had been in far worse states along the way. Yeah. So, and he was in a, you know, he had been on a, in a very healthy place for the prior, like, five, six months there. And, you know, the, 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 the downward spiral happened quick over a period of a few days. And, um, and so, it just seemed like it was almost like the norm for us at That's the time. That's what it was, yeah. And, you know, it became the and norm. we weren't, like, we weren't going to church every Sunday, mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I mean, at the, yeah. at the same time. So it's like you don't see that. You're, when you're that age, you think nobody is going to die ever. Yeah. This is going to happen. You know, we're going to keep doing, like, we're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. That dude's indestructible. He was a healthy guy. He was a strong, athletic, healthy mm -hmm. guy. You would think, oh, this is the last of us that's going to go down. It's me first, you know. Uh, but, you know, it, it, just, it, it just completely surprised everyone. You know, and when you, but when you look back on it, you realize, well, how could any of you be surprised based on yeah. how you were behaving? And, and, and you just don't know that when you're young. Are there certain other, other parts during the movie when you say, well, um, um, in hindsight, like you were saying, this was the thing that you say I should have done differently. Is there other parts you say, well, now in hindsight, with the way I am now, um, that's something that really comes over like, well, if we have acted this way, then something might change and would have changed? I mean, I would drive myself crazy if I, you know, thought that way too much. Are you saying like... No, no, not, not, not with him. But just the way with the band, how, 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 how the band work, what did you do? And yes. I mean, you look back all the time and you're like, oh man, we should have done these things differently. Absolutely. We you make a... Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that we were like, we were, we were just... Um, by the time that, that uh, you know, we got really successful and it took a long time on our first record and we stayed on the road for, a lo for far too long and we were pretty worn out and so yeah. then you get to this point where you got to make another record and then there's a lot of decisions that are, need to be made and we're all completely fried yeah. and uh, we just didn't take control of our own destiny in ways that we could have that we didn't maybe just didn't know that we had the ability to do. Shannon was, uh, you know, was the strongest about that. Like he would, he, he gave a lot of pushback to the record company. Yeah, he and, did. And, he and, stuck and up to, for us. Yeah, yeah. and, and um, to management and whatever. But it was just, uh, we, we should have, at some point, we should have gotten off the road sooner, made another record sooner. You know, all those decisions that we made, you look back and you know, I, you know, I wish I would have done things differently. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can't, if you look back on something that's this tragic and say, I don't have regrets and something's fucking wrong with you, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I have plenty of regrets in life. Every I'm not one of those people who says, I have no regrets. I'm like, what, do you have no soul? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> no, that's, and if you, if you watch the whole documentary now, what is for you a personal, uh, personal high point for you if you look back on it to say, well, that was really nice to look back on it to see the footage? I'm trying to think of a moment, like I would say the Rolling Stone cover, but there was so much drama involved <laughs> yeah. in that, so that it's everything's so bittersweet. There were so many of those moments that we had, that they should have been the amazing moments that were, you know, maybe something bad happened that's attached to yeah, it. Yeah, every, every, every good thing was fraught with yeah. all sorts you know, of yeah, he's uh, other thought. things that got there, yeah. got us there. Yeah. And, and it was undercut by stuff like Yeah, that happened you know, a lot to us. Shannon, yeah. Shannon did not trust, like if he were in here with you, First of all, he'd walk in and he wouldn't trust you because you're the media, yeah. you know? Yeah. And he would, he would, um, he could say anything. He could do, like, he would openly <laughs> berate journal. I mean, he made people mad, you know, that could have helped us along the way because yeah. he didn't, he just couldn't. But how come? He was suspicious, I think. He was suspicious. He didn't like authority. He hated authority. So anything to do with the police or yeah. whatever, which he yeah. would get in trouble with. So he was, yeah. he was just kind of in that posture a lot. And, and, and I think being, having been friends with like Axel or whatever and seeing all the stuff that was yeah. going on with him. He didn't trust the press for that. Yeah. You know. And uh, yeah. so he was a little worried about that. But having said that, he did have friends, you know, that, that we had developed in the press over the years. But yeah. if somebody like said something to him or asked him a question that he felt like they were sort of, you know, patronizing to him, yeah. like he was, he was, he had his backup about that before it even started. So when, yeah. it, when that happened, he would just go off and walk out punch somebody you never know yeah. but to you he was completely different he was yeah he was a, he was a he was a great friend he really yeah. was i mean he was a yeah. loving he was a he was a um a person who had a lot of friends and he had close relationships with a lot of people in his life and he was a um he was i mean 
he was a, a tough person to deal with at times. You know, he had a lot of anger and violence issues or whatever, but never towards he had anger, but no violence towards us, but yeah. pretty much everybody else. Yeah. Like, much everybody if else. you're in his orbit, you know, you run the risk of getting punched. It's a heightened risk. <laughs> but um, he was, but he's always the first person to apologize. He was the <laughs> best at apologizing. He really yeah. was. He was he sincere had, about it. Yeah, he had enough experiences. There's also, there's also a lot of footage with, of a lot of footage with his mom and stuff like that. Have you spoken, are you in contact with his mom? Yeah. What, yes. what, what, yeah. what was it for her? Devastating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. I don't think we can even imagine it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, you know, devastating. I, I, don't, I wouldn't know what to say besides that. You yeah, know? I just... You can't I, imagine it. I just hug her every time I see her. Yeah. You know, she comes around to shows, give her a big hug, and man, you know, we know. <laughs> I mean, because yeah. we all loved him, so... But what is her attitude towards this movie? Does she want it out there? I mean, it's really personal. No, no, she wanted to see it get made. And, and, and yeah. sure. I don't think she's seen she it yet. She has not seen it, though, because it's too painful for her. But yeah. she wanted this movie. I mean, she's been invited to everything. We yeah. want her to come. But, you know, yeah. I think that she, and I don't know if I would want to see that yeah. either. Yeah. If I were, I mean, you know, I have two kids, and it's, it's like, um, yeah. I, I would, I don't know if I could watch that, you know? I mean. Yeah. It just brings you right back, because that's the thing about this movie. It, it, w w when I saw it, uh, I thought, anybody who sees this will know him in a certain way, like, because it's accurate, and it's, like, because it's him. He made it. It's like, his personality really comes across. Not all of it, but... A lot, lot. of it, and, and like, what I've said to people before is it, it feels like you just get to hang out with him for an hour and a half, you know? You feel like you're just yeah. hanging out with this guy and getting to know him. It's that intimate of a, of a movie, you know? And... Um what do you what do you what do you hope this movie will do? I'd like to be an international film star. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know I want people to know him, you know, and um, and know the story and just know what an incredible person he was and the incredible effect he had on us and and everyone else who's heard his records, you know. Although, I, like we've said this before, I don't think you have to even like the band to enjoy the movie. The movie is such an incredible piece of work just in that sense, in that world, you know. We wanted it to be a, like, uh, and, and that's what we talked to Danny about early on, like, look, I'm not gonna say to you, oh, you gotta cut this scene because I look bad, you know, or, yeah. or it makes me, it embarrasses me or whatever. It's like, make it, make it accurate, make it real, make it a real work of art. Yeah. And that's, that's what he did. And it's like, that was my, that's all the expectations I have from it. That's it. So yeah. whatever good flows from that, is you know deserved and that's the way everything that we yeah. do is set up yeah. um, I, we're, we can't like if you're chasing the dollar or if you're chasing you know fame or whatever that's a that's a fool's errand yeah um, that will come to you if if it's meant to be but it has to begin with your the drive to make something that's real yeah. Yeah. and the filmmakers did that what did he what did Shannon give to you that's a heavy question. I mean, you know, it sounds cheesy, but honestly, he made my dreams come true. You know what I mean? If you're asking, is that that's the question? Like, what did he give to us in, yeah. in that in that sense? I mean, like, without him, I wouldn't have. You know, we had a, an incredible ride. We're still talking about you know songs that we wrote in our when we were 20. So, you know, it was a you know, that was it. My dream was to go out and make records, and and uh, he made that he made that come true. For you, his his personality and like his um, just you know who he was, it is burned into my memory and it occupies a large space in my brain. Yeah. He said just who he was, but how was he for you then? What can you? He's a describe? great friend. Like you know, just uh, he, he. I felt like he kind of looked out for us. You know, Shannon, Shannon was a little more savvy, <laughs> you know, than, than I was. You know, I was fresh off the farm when I met him, but he had already been around the bend, mm -hmm. you know, by the time I met him. And he had had, you know, a full life experiences by the time I met him when he was 18 19, or 20 years old or whatever. And um, he, um, he kind of like, I don't know, just just to be in a proximity with a pure artist like that, uh, you, and, and uh, you see like he kind of had this fearless uh, way of living and being creative that, that you know, is, is worthy of emulation or worthy of recognizing, you know. Um, and worthy of following. Uh, yes. And, and I think that's, uh, yeah. you know, he was, a, he was a clear star from the minute you met him. 
and, and that was clear from day one. I mean, I, when he started singing, I mean, I was just, uh, that guy is, is I'll, you know, I'll follow him yeah, in yeah. the world, you know, because he's a, he's a superstar. Yeah. And um, he, he, he looked and behaved and sang like a star. Yeah. And that's just so unusual. That's, that's not one in a million, that's one in a billion. And you feel lucky to be in their orbit. You just feel lucky to be in the orbit, you know what I mean? Because fun things happen around those people. They take you to places you never would have been to before. I would have been too afraid to do something. And Shannon's like, we're going to go do this. Oh, OK. And you have the most amazing night with him ever. So he did that for me, too. Yeah. And for people who don't know his music, what's, what song, or maybe, maybe more songs, but um, comes closest to him as a person? I mean, Change is an obvious example. And that's the one that like, I, I think of because it was complete before we even met him. He, like, th that was what he played for us on the first day we met him in this little like garage in, in West Hollywood and he sat down on the floor with an acoustic guitar and played it and, and, and it was uh, his voice and when I, I was so struck by it when I first heard it because I'd never heard a voice like that it was like I thought he sounded like a girl <laughs> at first and then I thought he's a, you know he's, but he's like Janis Joplin and then I heard Rod Stewart or like you know yeah, all these things I was trying to reference it in my or, or like attach it to something that I knew before but it wasn't like anything like that. I mean, he had elements of that, but he was a real straight up, really great blues singer, like, and like, almost like a, with a country edge to, you know, he was, a, he was a product of the Midwest in the United States. And so there's that salt of the earth feeling to it. But he knew how to hit that blue note and he had that rasp in his voice and it was a pure tone. Like, it never, we never got it on tape. <laughs> like, like how his voice sounded if yeah, he was sitting in this room, room because true. it was, it had yeah, a texture right. and a nuance to it, yep. it was just, Magic. Yeah, you're right. There's a song called All That I Need that he wrote more near the end of his life that to me is just like, you know. Yeah, like, and we never finished it as know, a group, but it's, yeah, it, it it's, exists as a song. It's like, an amazing song. So to hear Change, which he wrote when he was like 18 or 19 or whatever, one of mm -hmm. the first songs I heard, and to hear some of the songs near the end, it's just, it's an incredible, you know, it's, an, it's incredible. Yeah, he progressed for sure. He really you could did, hear his. Yeah. his he uh, really did. The stuff that people haven't heard yet, you know, there's there's songs yeah. that are like, I mean, you know, you just wish, ah, oh, you know, what could have been, you know. Yeah. Um, that part is incredibly frustrating. Is it something that you might work on? Yes. Yeah. Positively, yeah. Um, yeah. It'll, it'll I, I don't know in what context, but. No, we're figuring that out now. Yeah. But there's some really great stuff, really intimate stuff that kind of matches the movie. That's just him on acoustic guitar and things like that, which is yeah. some of the most powerful stuff. Back to what he's saying, if you were just there with him in the room, there was something magical and special that happened yeah. that we didn't always maybe get on tape. You know? Yeah, and you didn't know it at the time, like yeah. there were, there, there were like, because he had he had a sort of a rotating cast of songs that were in development a lot. So yeah. like, and yeah. we're also writing songs, so it's like stuff gets thrown into the mix and then stuff doesn't get finished. But he's still walking around with the acoustic guitar all the time yeah. playing these songs. You're like, oh, we got to remember that one. Yeah. We got to do that one. And we, you know, the stuff we didn't get around to. But, but you, I've heard probably most of the songs that haven't been released, you know, 50 times because he was yeah. just, that's yeah. the way he did it. He would have an initial idea and he would kind of rework it and rework it and rework it and change the lyrics and do all this stuff. He, he would work on stuff for a while. Um, and um, so, you know, the, the things that were unfinished in his mind or we didn't get to are, are, are there and, and eventually, you know, we'll figure out what to do with them. But. Last question. Um, in hindsight, when p people die, you say, well, it's meant to happen. Was it meant to happen or was it just maybe an accident or something? Was it? Well, it seemed like an accident to me that night in particular. You know, we've talked about this before. We've, you know, there was other nights that scared me more than that. Was, you know, that wasn't an extraordinary yeah, I, I think the so, universe. I think events yeah. in the universe are, are, are random, <laughs> yeah, it seems and so. uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't think there is a, a an overarching purpose to things necessarily, and uh, but I and, or that things are meant to happen in that way. But stuff does happen, and uh, yeah. you know it's cause and effect. What did it do to you? The first moment, at the first months or years when he passed away. What was it for you? I was paralyzed for a little bit and didn't do much of anything. And then I had such fear of losing what we had. You know, I finally, my dream came true. I was making records for a living, and I just was in such fear of that ending that after I kind of became unparalyzed from just being overwhelmed with grief from his death, I just started to get to work, and I just worked through it. You know, probably never even really, you know, processed it maybe the, the proper way, but I just got to work because I was just like, I don't want. I don't want it to end. I don't want music to end for me. And it, and it was on the line to end because he was gone. So I was just like, oh, what do I do now? You know? 
I mean, I was, I was in shock for 20 years. I mean, really, like, I kind of just, I, in a way, I walked away. Like, I, I didn't stop playing music, but I kind of stopped putting it in the, in the forefront of my mind in the same way. And honestly, I just kept the party going for, I moved to New York and just went fucking nuts. You know, because I, I, I was completely avoiding it. I, I, I had no, almost no emotional response. Like, I felt dead inside. When, when it happened, and it wasn't until about like 2014, 2015, all of a sudden, like I started like, man, I really want to play music you know, again, and like it just came back. How come, how come, what happened? I realized what it was, you know, I became a lawyer and realized what it was like to actually have a job. <laughs> um, but uh, it was, I don't know, it was, um, I don't know, I can't explain it, but, um, you know, I just started, I developed a passion for it again that had been gone. And it really took that out of me, you know, and I realized that even though like we played in 2008 and all this, well, my mind was not in the same place. I, I wasn't in it for the, the, like I wanted to like have the success and have the career again, but I, I, I wasn't like focused, as focused on the music. And now that's really all I care about it, about it. Really, I mean, whatever, I mean, I'd like to not starve <laughs> but, uh, you know, to me, it'll be a success if we can make, you know, good records. Thank you for your time. Thanks yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat>